Hello and welcome to chapter 2 of The Dream Giver. And the title of chapter 2 is Ordinary Leaves His Comfort Zone. The next morning, Ordinary woke up at the usual time. But instead of reporting to his usual job, he packed his suitcase with the usual stuff. Then he added his journal and a bottle of permanent ink just before he closed the latch. He carefully placed his long white feather inside. Soon, Ordinary was walking away from the comfortable center of familiar, where almost every nobody lived. He was heading towards the border where almost nobodies ever went. Ordinary had never dared to walk this way before, but like every nobody, he knew that the farther he walked from the center of familiar, the less familiar things became. He also knew that most nobodies who tried to leave the comfort zone of familiar became so uncomfortable they turned around and went home. Some were glad to be back. They sat in their recliner for days, waiting for nothing to happen and sighing with relief. But Ordinary told himself he was different from most nobodies. He would pursue his dream no matter what. Brimming in anticipation, Ordinary whistled his tune while he walked and he dreamed about great things he would accomplish life had never been so promising ordinary hadn't gone far however when he no longer felt like whistling he couldn't say why but he just wasn't in the mood anymore then as he walked further he began to feel edgy the scenery looked different. The leaves on the trees looked leafy in a different way. Now, Ordinary thought about his dream. It looked different too. For the first time, he saw how pursuing it could cause him a lot of discomfort. He would have to do unfamiliar things in unfamiliar places and he wouldn't have his box to watch. Then he had even more disturbing thoughts. To do what he most loved, he would have to do what he most dreaded. Ordinary's mood quickly went from edgy to anxious. His steps began to slow and he began to have big doubts about his big dream. What had he been thinking? He didn't have enough talent or skills to succeed at this dream. He was clearly unable to accomplish great things. What if he failed right in front of other nobodies? Worse, even if he could dream, he was clearly unworthy. Anybody could see he hadn't deserved to live his dream. He was just ordinary after all. Maybe the dream giver had meant to give the dream to some other nobody more noble than him but now each step was harder to take than the last his anxiety grew into fear then up ahead he saw a sign it read leaving the comfort zone of familiar entering borderland now, Ordinary felt sheer terror, sweat pouring off his forehead. He could hardly breathe. He could hardly think. Then he just came to the sign. Ordinary hit an invisible wall of fear. He stopped, unable to take one more step. He dropped his suitcase and sat on it. Should he turn around, he wondered. Or should he try to find a way to go on? Time passed. Then he heard these words. Why are you stopping? Ordinary recognized the dream giver. I think I want to go back home. 
he said quickly, I'm not the right nobody to go, af go after such a big dream. Yes, you are, said the dream giver. I made you to do this. But I don't think I can do this, he said. Yes, you can, and I will be with you. I will help you. Ordinary stayed where he was. He watched an unfamiliar bug crawl across the toe of his shoe. Strange birds flew by overhead. After a while, he stood and looked longingly towards the unknown. Somewhere out there was his big dream. But getting from here to there seemed way too hard. Then he looked longingly back towards familiar. He fondly remembered all of its comforts. His usual job, his best friend, his recliner, his box. There was something wonderful about nothing happening. Ordinary picked up his suitcase and decided to take one step in that direction, just to see what it felt like. It felt better. Right away his breathing came easier. So he took another step, just to see what that step would feel like. It felt even better. He went on, with every step back towards the middle of familiar, Ordinary grew more comfortable, but he quickly noticed he was growing sad again, and he knew why. With each step he took, he was leaving his big dream further behind. Then he heard the dream giver again. Why are you going back? he asked. Ordinary stopped. Because I'm afraid. Leaving familiar feels too scary, too risky, he said. Yes, it does. But if I am supposed to do this big dream, he exclaimed, then I'm sure it wouldn't feel so afraid. Yes, you would, said the dream giver. Everybody does. Ordinary hung his head and he thought for a moment. But you could take away the fear. Please take the fear away, he begged. If you don't, I can't go on. Yes, you can, the dream giver said. Take courage, Ordinary. And then he was gone. Ordinary saw his choice clearly now. He could either keep his comfort zone or his dream. But how do you take courage when you don't have any? Ordinary decided if his fear wasn't going to leave, he would have to go forward in spite of it. Still trembling, he picked up his suitcase, turned, back, turned his back on familiar, and walked to the sign. And even though his fear kept growing, Ordinary shut his eyes and took a big step forward, right through the invisible wall of fear. And there he made a surprising discovery. On the other side of that single step, the exact one Ordinary didn't think he could take, he found that he had broken through his comfort zone. Now the wall of fear was behind him. He was free and his dream was ahead. He began to whistle again as he walked on, his big dream beating highly in beating, beating brightly in his chest. Later that day, Ordinary took out his journal and his long white feather and wrote down the truth about his comfort zone. And this is what he said. It was hard to leave my comfort zone, but it could have been harder to leave behind my dream. And I'm glad I didn't. I still don't feel worthy or able to do my dream, but the dream giver has promised to help me. Now I know a secret. I can take courage even when I feel afraid. My big dream was on the other side of that invisible wall of fear. I had to step through it. I didn't think I could, but I did. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.